I'm guessing yes. <laughs> All right, so uh, family affair. We have talked about uh, the first relation, this interpersonal relationship that God established with husbands and wives. We've talked about parents and children and <coughs> excuse me, how that works both ways, just like husband and wife works both ways. Um, we're moving on to uh, one that is very dear to my heart, grandparents, because this grandpa thing is awesome. Yeah. Um, I've got a little thing that I want to read to you. This was written by uh, an eight-year-old. Um, the title is Grandmothers, okay? So, a grandmother is a lady who has no children of her own. <laughs> so she likes other people's little girls. A, a grandfather is a man grandmother. <laughs> he goes, walks with the boys, and they talk about fishing, tractors, and like that. Grandmothers don't have to do anything except be there. They're old, so they shouldn't play hard or run. <laughs> it is enough if they drive us to the shops where the pretend horse is and have lots of five cent candy ready. They are often fat, but not too fat to tie little kids' shoes. <laughs> They wear funny glasses and funny underwear, and they can take their teeth and gums off. <laughs> Everyone should try to have one, because grandmothers are the only grown-ups who have got time. <clears throat> My daughter says that, uh, if a man tells you you're fat, he's rude. If a woman tells you you're fat, she's jealous. But if a toddler tells you you're fat, you're fat. <laughs> okay? So, um, I don't know at what age um, inhibitions are, are tempered, but none of my grandchildren have reached that age yet. Um, so we're gonna, gonna look at grandparents. There's actually quite a few things in scripture talking about grandparents. Um, now we talked a couple weeks back about uh, children's responsibilities to their parents. And you know our key verse is Exodus 20, verse 12. It says, honor your father and mother that your days may be long in the land that your father, uh, that your God is giving you. Now, uh, we've talked about the difference between honor and obedience and how we still honor our parents at no point in our lives does that ever end. But there may come a time where the obedience to our parents has to be curtailed somewhat because as you grow up and establish your own household, you're going to have guidelines for your household that don't necessarily uh, reflect your parents' households. Okay. Um, each of my children that are out on their own has their own unique way of doing things um, and I think that's the way it's supposed to be um, but if you'll notice there's no time limit on honoring your parents and I think this is significant you say well what does this have to do with grandparents because as parents continue to honor their parents the grandchildren learn the value of honoring. They learn to honor their, their grandparents. They learn to honor their parents. And the cycle should perpetuate itself through down through the generations. Okay? A um, <clears throat> couple things that scripture says specifically to grandparents. Uh, Leviticus 19.32. Um, I've got quite a few verses today. I apologize. Uh, I started to get them written up to put on the overhead, and I got distracted. And so they still sit on my computer unfinished. Uh, so if you miss a verse, let me know, and I'll, I'll give it back to you. So Leviticus 19.32. You shall stand up before the gray head and honor the face of an old man. 
and you shall fear your God, I am the Lord. Think about that for a moment. God says it's honoring to stand up to acknowledge the elderly. Now, our, our culture, we, we do things a lot different, but I think sometimes we need to go back to the simplicity of showing honor. Okay? Um, there's a number of things that, that I was taught growing up that um, this, this culture really doesn't reflect anymore. Um, I, I need to check before I say this. Growing up, uh, we were not allowed to wear a house, uh, a hat indoors. Okay, you walked, as soon as you crossed the threshold, your hat came off to honor the people of the house. Um, that, that doesn't really happen anymore. Uh, most people, they, they, that uh, typically men, they wear their hat like it's sewed to their head. And it just doesn't really ever come off. That's, that's a tradition, that's, that's something that I learned. Um, now, uh, as a father, I could insist that my children would honor that rule in my household, but I can't insist that they honor that rule in their household. Okay? Um, <clears throat> that's something that is unique. But God says here, to honor the elderly, we should stand. You, you, you stand up to acknowledge them. Okay? Um, grandchildren are to be a blessing to their grandparents. Proverbs 17, verse 6. Proverbs 17, verse 6. Grandchildren are the crown of the aged, and the glory of children is their father's. I think when uh, Solomon was writing this, he kind of had in mind that, uh, you know, if you survive long enough to become a grandparent, uh, the fact that you have grandchildren indicates you did something right. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, we have nine grandchildren that have been born, one that has gone on to heaven, and one that is yet to make its entrance uh, into the world via delivery. I love my grandchildren. Um, you know, I'm always much more comfortable with little kids than I am with normal people. <laughs> because normal people are just weird, okay? And uh, so I, I always am much more comfortable around kids. When Christy and I got married, um, actually before we got married, we were all sitting around in the commons area of the Bible school. Um, we were not even dating at that point, um, but they were talking about how many kids everybody wanted to have. And both Christy and I at the same time said five. And so we went and got married and had five kids. Because <laughs> that's how things work. Um, but uh, after, shortly after we were married, I was talking with my oldest brother, and uh, we were talking about children, and I told him that we were going to have five kids. And he said, you're, you're crazy. There is no way in the world you guys can have five kids in the world today, in the economy that we have today. I said, watch me. <laughs> and so we have five, two that have gone on, and then five that are here today. Um, and. Uh, you know, that's, that's one area in my life that I felt like I did a pretty good job at. Not because I necessarily had anything to offer, but God blessed Christy and I with all five of our children and our, our children that have been married into our family that we love just as much as our biological children. They're all serving the Lord at this point in their lives. Um, compared to some of the stories that I've heard from some of you guys, Christy and I had it really easy. Of course, Christy doesn't say that as much as I do, because evidently our children acted differently around her when I was not home than they did when I was home. Uh, you know, Christopher, our oldest, 
uh, has a, a pretty broad streak of choleric type A personality in him. And Christy used to tell me, it's, it's, I, I cannot deal with him. I tell him to do this, and he argues, and, and I'm thinking, you're out of your ever-loving mind. I tell him to do it, and he does it. Or he assigns one of his younger siblings to do it. Okay. Uh, well, one day, uh, at the time, I was working several jobs, and Christy and I were trading back and forth who was home at the time. And uh, my job that morning had been postponed. So I was in the bedroom getting dressed, and I heard, hear Christy out in the other room telling Christopher, um, you need to fix cereal for Benjamin. Now, I, I'm going to rat out Benjamin here just a little bit. Um, I think Benjamin was about 15 before he realized that the spoon is supposed to go with the food on the top into your mouth so that it doesn't wash down the front of you. Because he would pick up his spoon and turn it over, and he had a perpetual milk stain. Where well, you're like 15, I think, to find this stuff, something like that. Um, anyway, Christopher was arguing with Christy about, no, today is not my day to fix Benjamin's breakfast. It's Donovan's day because I fixed his breakfast yesterday. And I can hear Christy getting frustrated telling him, Christopher, I don't care. I want you to make Benjamin's breakfast. And I can hear him arguing as they're coming down the hall. And I'm standing in the bedroom and I'm just looking at the door. And Christy comes in the door with that look on her face. See what I got to deal with? See this? Christopher walks in the door and he's got this, you know, I'm explaining things to mom look and all of a sudden he went, oh, dad's home. <laughs> and he turned around and walked out and he went and made breakfast. <laughs> and so Christopher and I had to have a sit down and he had to come to the understanding that yes, I am the head of the house, but when I am not present, that authority rests on your mom. Because one of his favorite things to do would be to tell her, that's not how dad said to do it. Okay? And so, um, you know, we have unique children. When Christopher was born and, and Christy was pregnant with Donovan, we are like, how in the world, you know, we're going to have two? And, and, and they, wow, they were, they were about as opposite as you could get. And then Christy got pregnant with Benjamin. And I thought, well, there's no room. I mean, we've got both sides of the coin. And we realized that it was not a coin, it was a polyhedron. And, and, and every one of our kids has a different face on that thing. So, um, but being a grandparent is an incredible, incredible blessing. Now, I want to read something that I, I, as I was pondering this a while back. Uh, being a grandparent gives a parent another chance to be a godly influence in the lives of their grandchildren without the burden of being responsible for their messes. My reputation does not ride on my grandchildren. We go out in public and one of my grandchildren throws a fit, I just point to their dad. <laughs> That's his kid. I don't know him. My grandchildren are all well behaved. <laughs> when they're not well behaved, it's their children, okay? Um, but I have seen, actually I'm going to back up, I'm going to get to that in a minute because there's something that I really want to lay down before uh, people that are grandparents or are planning on being grandparents down the road. There's a couple other things that I want to share with you. So uh, grandparents, um, grandchildren are their crown. Um, In 1 Timothy, uh, we're going to switch to the response. Oh, actually, that's not true. I'm going to reverse this. Uh, besides them being a blessing, uh, there are two things that Scripture says that I want to touch on real quickly. Grandparents should also bless their children. Okay? We see this in Genesis uh, 31, verse 55. Genesis 31, verse 55. Uh, this is the story of Laban and Jacob. Jacob has snuck away and he's taken his property and his family and he's bailed and Laban has chased him down. Uh, and then they have this confrontation. And uh, after they work everything through, the next morning, 
Laban gets up and he's getting ready to leave. One of his complaints to Jacob was that he never even got to say goodbye to his kids, his grandkids. And so the next morning, they, they work this out. The next morning, uh, Laban's getting ready to go. And it says, early in the morning, Laban arose and kissed his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them. Then Laban departed and returned home. He blessed them. As grandparents, one of our responsibilities is to bless our grandchildren. Um, we are also called to teach them about God and the things that God has done in our lives, but also throughout the course of history. Exodus chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Exodus 10, 1 and 2. Uh, then the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I may show these signs of mine among them, and that you may tell in the hearing of your son and of your grandson how I have dealt harshly with the Egyptians and what signs I have done among them, that you may know that I am the Lord. See, as grandparents, there is a responsibility that we have to our descendants, not just our children, but to the generations that follow, to tell them about God and the things that God has done. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9, says, Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. You, you picking up here? You know, we, we've already discussed that one of the primary responsibilities of the parent to their children is to teach them the things of God. But see, that's, that's not the only adult in their life that's supposed to teach them. There's also grandparents that should be speaking into their lives the things of God. Um, Backing up now, grandchildren, they also have responsibilities in this dynamic, how God establishes this thing. Um, first in, uh, uh, sorry, I missed a verse. I'm going to back up a little bit. One other thing for grandparents, uh, they bless, they teach. Uh, Proverbs 13.22 says, uh, I'll let you catch up. Proverbs 13, 22. Mm -hmm. This is Solomon writing. Uh, this is uh, kind of at the height of his wisdom, uh, although, you know, he was already dabbling in what would later be his downfall, but... Um, this is at the height of his wisdom. He says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Did you ever think about that? As a grandparent, you have a responsibility. Now, when you think inheritance, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? Money. I think it goes way beyond that. I think uh, we establish a legacy in our children and grandchildren. Uh, we share those things that God has brought through us, and we help establish it. Um, you know, my mom has already determined there are certain things that, that certain of her children get. Uh, my brother claims she, her bronzed shoes. You, you guys have no bronzed shoes? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, your little baby shoes, and they take them and they dip them in bronze. And as far as I'm concerned, you can have them. They don't fit me. <laughs> um, okay, bronze shoes. You want her shoes, you can have her shoes. Uh, so mom's gone through and, and kind of made a list of who gets what. Um, I told my mom, actually I told her years ago, uh, my mom and dad, that the greatest blessing that they could give me was to make sure that when they passed on, there was no debt. Because then I would be responsible for my family's debt as well as their debt. Um, and other than that, the only thing I ever wanted was pictures. Okay, um, so a legacy and an inheritance to your grandchildren. 
Um, now, backing up grandchildren's responsibilities to their grandparents. First Timothy chapter 5. First Timothy chapter 5. I'm only going to grab a couple of verses out of here. Um, again, this is a pastoral epistle. Paul is writing to Timothy. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, he's kind of telling him what it means or what it looks like to serve as a pastor, as a minister. But he's also um, showing him things about how the church should be run. So in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, I'm only going to grab a couple verses. The first one, uh, actually I'll start at verse 1 and then I'll, I'll kind of skip around a little bit. Uh, do not rebuke an older man, but encourage him as you would a father. Younger men as brothers. Older women as mothers. Younger women as sisters in all purity. Now, if you remember, Jesus said that uh, he who has left father and mother, or husband or wife, children, for my sake, will gain a hundredfold in return. I think this is part of what that verse is talking about. Because when you come into the family of God, you have just joined a family. Okay? And when Paul is speaking to Timothy, he's laying out how this should, should look like, what this should look like, how this should be done. Um, so he goes on. In verse 3, he says, Honor widows who are truly widows. I don't know how you fake that. But um, honor widows as truly widows. But then check out verse 4. Okay, this is a significant verse. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show godliness to their own households and to make some return to their parents, for this is pleasing in the sight of God. One of the things that blesses me so much in our church, um, we keep an eye on our golden agers. Um, you want to learn a gift. Learn to encourage them to tell their stories. And then listen. Because, wow, some of these neat little ladies that you see sitting over here with their hair coiffed and, and their sweaters and looking, they were hellions. <laughs> I saw that look, Vivian. <laughs> Seriously, though, they have got stories to tell. They have wisdom and experience to share. Um, going on a, a few verses down, uh, in verse 8, Paul kind of changes his tone. He says, but if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Now you get the picture that God's serious about this? Um, as a church, we have a responsibility to take care of the older people in our church. I thank God that most of the older people in our church have godly children and grandchildren that look after them, but that does not abrogate our responsibility to check in and make sure everything's okay. Um, and, and you guys, uh, those of you that uh, don't believe you're in that elder group, you do a fantastic job uh, getting involved and finding out what's happening and keeping up with the things that are going on. It always blesses me. Um, you know, Mary Lou's up at the uh, rehabilitation center up in Missoula, and I know of at least four or five people that have gone up to visit her. And what a blessing that is. Um, because she knows it's not just pastor doing his job. It's the people of this church that are loving her and going up and spending time with her. And I think that speaks well of this fellowship. Okay, so uh, moving on. Um, grandchildren uh, should bless their parents in return. Um, they should take care of their parents and grandparents as they move on. Now, you know, if you plan this outright, um, 
uh, Josh came and spoke to me. Uh, he was asking for permission to marry my daughter. He waited till we were at church to ask because he knows I don't bring a gun to church. <laughs> And I told him there were a couple rules, things that, that had to be in place before I would consent. Um, actually, we, I'm going to give you two conversations wrapped up into one because the first conversation was when he came and asked permission to date my daughter. Um, so I told him there were some things that I expected of a man that would uh, consider marrying my daughter, uh, that he had to take care of her body, soul, and spirit that he needed to be the priest of his family, the, um, the head of his family, leading, leading them in a godly manner. Um, we talked about that and talked about what that looks like and, and the things that I was expecting because, you know, she may be your wife, but she's always my daughter. And, um, you know, my boys can stand up for themselves, but don't you touch my daughter. Okay. I'll get all kinds of ugly. And so I told him there was one other condition, and I told this to Mackenzie from the time she was little. Um, well, there were two things. One, she was not allowed to date till she was 36. So, <laughs> so he had to wait till then to take her on a date. Um, and then the other thing was uh, that by the time he could take her on a date, he was a millionaire and was willing to fund my retirement. <laughs> you guys are laughing. <laughs> Josh knows, I'm not kidding. Because I check, I, hey, how's the million dollars coming? <laughs> Josh, you sure you have time to come and hang out? Shouldn't you be, like, making money and stuff? <laughs> no, I don't harass him about that a lot, but uh, uh, <laughs> I do harass him some. So, uh, grandparents. I have seen so many grandparents speak into the lives of their grandchildren. Uh, kind of a, a sad thing, I've seen so many grandparents that actually have to parent their grandchildren because parents just aren't. Whether they can't or whether they don't, they just, they're not doing it. I, I've seen so many grandparents that are taking care of their grandchildren. And I, I think that's, that's something that is just part of the sin of this world. Because I think as a grandparent, you should be able to enjoy your time with your grandchildren. And when they mess their diapers, you give them back. When they throw a fit, you give them back. Um, you spoil them like crazy, you sugar them up and caffeinate them, and give them back. Okay? Um, it's so interesting because I can watch my children parent and I can see them making the same mistakes that I made as a parent. Now, I would have never told you this as a parent, but, uh, you know, when I was a parent, there was... I can be hard. You know, there's not a lot of softness in me. And I expected my kids to toe the line. There were certain things they were responsible for that they had to do. And, and it was just expected that they would do it. Every one of my kids was required to bring home A's. You go, wow, why? Because they could. You know, Christopher established that rule for all of his children because Christopher slacked off as he was getting close to graduation and started bringing home B's. The only reason he was bringing on B's was because it took work to get an A. And so from Christopher senior year down, the rule was everybody brings home an A. If you're struggling in a class, there's grace. Get the help that you need. Mom and I can help up to like algebra. Beyond that, you need a tutor. And even some of the algebra I'm kind of rusty on because you know what? I don't use it. You know? I'm not sitting in here trying to figure out the square of the hypotenuse <laughs> with the seating. You know, I, I don't care. But they were all required to have an A. And if you didn't bring home an A, guess what? You lost your television, you lost your games, you lost all those things that distract you from doing your homework. And you lost it until you brought your grade back up to an A. Okay. Now, Christy uh, 
was a lot of balance to me because Christy was very, uh, I don't want to say loving because I love my kids. I still love my kids, but she was softer. She had a, 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 a way of dealing with them that was uh, compassionate, whereas, you know, I, I tended to be hard, she tended to be soft. Uh, her softness kind of bled on me a little bit. My hardness kind of bled on her a little bit. Uh, and now that we're grandparents, we're realizing, wow, we made this parenting thing so much harder than it needed to be. <laughs> we really did. But as a grandparent, when my kids are making the mistakes that I made, I let them learn the same way that I learned through experience. I'm not going to step in and correct them. That's, that's their job. I am not the child's parent. I'm the grandparent. When, when the punishment's done, I can pull them up in my lap and hug them and let them cry it out, but I'm not interfering with my kids' parenting. Okay? That's their responsibility before God. Okay? So as a grandparent, um, we have a, a very good friend of ours. We, we have a lot of adoptee children. Um, you know, there were several times that I came out into the living room to find somebody sleeping on our couch <coughs> that uh, I did not know was there. Um, we, we always wanted our house to be a place for people to come visit. And so um, one of our adopted daughters, she came to the church for a long time. Her name is Mackenzie. Not my real daughter, Mackenzie, her best friend, Mackenzie. Um, and her mom and dad uh, went through a pretty ugly divorce. And Kenzie really, she, she actually spent a lot of time in our house while all that was going on. And uh, while we were able to speak into her life, she still calls me dad and Christy mom, but she had uh, grandparents who are believers. And uh, they spoke into her life and helped keep her stable in her faith while all this insanity and stupidity was taking place between her mother and her father. So um, other grandparents that, that are speaking into the lives of their grandchildren, you have value. God wants to use you to speak into the lives of those children that he loves further than you can even comprehend. So as a grandparent, don't feel like you're wasted. Don't feel like you're, you're ineffective. You keep putting the seed out there because it will take root. Now how it's going to grow, you're not responsible for. You're responsible for putting the seed out there. Okay? And enjoy your grandkids. Boy, you just had to ruin that, didn't you? <laughs> That's his child. So I, I would encourage you on this note, if you are a grandparent, do the things that God has called you to. Do them as unto God. Be faithful. Speak into the lives of your grandchildren, and, and in some cases, great-grandchildren, and in a couple of cases, great-great-grandchildren. Um, speak into their lives. Lift them up in prayer. Don't be afraid. To, to be with them. Um, if you are a grandchild and your grandparent parents are still alive, remember to bless them. Be a blessing to them. Remember that God expects you to take care of them. Okay? So grandparents, grandchildren, I love being a grandpa way more than being a dad. Being a dad was pretty cool. But, you know, I don't have to care what my grandchildren's grades are. That's their, their parents' problem. That's not my problem. So uh, be blessed and be a blessing. Amen? Amen. Amen.